Welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the second video in IB Biology Topic 2, Molecular Biology, where we will be looking at carbohydrates and lipids. Carbohydrates are a group of molecules composed of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Carbohydrates are present in three levels of structure, known as monosaccharides, disaccharides and polysaccharides. Monosaccharides are the most basic unit. Common monosaccharides discussed in the IB Biology syllabus are glucose, fructose, galactose and ribose. You should know the structure of glucose and ribose in detail, so let's explore them. Glucose is a hexagonal ring consisting of five carbons and one oxygen in the top right corner. There is a CH2OH group on the upper left carbon and both a hydrogen and hydroxyl group on the remaining carbons. Glucose comes in two forms, alpha-D-glucose and beta-D-glucose. The difference between these two is that in beta-D-glucose, the rightmost carbon's hydrogen and hydroxyl groups are flipped. Ribose is a pentagonal ring consisting of four carbons and one oxygen at the top. Like glucose, there is a CH2OH group on the upper left carbon. Ribose also comes in two forms, D-ribose and deoxy-D-ribose. The difference between these two is that in deoxy-D-ribose, the bottom right hydroxyl loses its oxygen to become a hydrogen. Disaccharides are formed when two monosaccharides join via a condensation reaction, which produces water. As discussed in our previous IB Biology Topic 2 video, this would be an anabolic reaction. The common disaccharides you need to recall are maltose, sucrose and lactose. Maltose is made of glucose plus glucose. Sucrose is made of glucose plus fructose. And lactose is made of glucose plus galactose. For the IB Biology syllabus, you need to ensure that you are comfortable drawing the formation of maltose from two glucose molecules. So, let's do this now. Start by drawing two glucose molecules next to one another. The hydroxyl group from one glucose combines with the hydrogen from the adjacent glucose. This forms a glycosidic link and releases water. You now know that disaccharides can be created, so let's cover how these can be destroyed. This occurs via hydrolysis reactions, which require water. As discussed previously, these are catabolic reactions. To draw this reaction, Start by drawing a molecule of maltose along with a molecule of water. The glycosidic link then breaks and the water splits into a hydroxyl and hydrogen group, which join to either part of the maltose. This forms two distinct glucose molecules. Polysaccharides are formed when more than two monosaccharides join via a condensation reaction. Like disaccharides, this produces water and is an anabolic reaction. In the IB syllabus, there are three main polysaccharides that you need to describe and draw the structure of. These are starch, glycogen and cellulose. Starch is the form in which plants store their energy. It is composed of many alpha-D-glucose molecules joined by glycosidic links into a helical chain. It is found in two different forms, amylose and amylopectin. Amylose is unbranched and forms an alpha helical structure. Amylopectin is branched, so it has lots of free ends for easy hydrolysis. Glycogen is the form in which humans store their energy. It is also composed of many alpha D glucose molecules in the form of amylopectin. It is more densely packed and is found in the liver and muscle. Cellulose is the structural carbohydrate for plants. It is composed of many beta-D-glucose molecules joined by glycosidic links into straight chains known as microfibrils. In cellulose, 
it is important to note that the beta-D glucose alternates in orientation. Between adjacent microfibrils, there are hydrogen bonds, which also increase its tensile strength. Take some time to ensure that you are comfortable drawing these three polysaccharides and identifying the location of their glycosidic link. Carbohydrates are a great source of energy. However, lipids, i.e. fats, are better for long-term energy storage because they release two times more energy per gram than carbohydrates, they are highly hydrophobic, so are not surrounded by water. As a result, they are stored six times more efficiently than carbohydrates. But what are lipids? Well, they are a group of molecules made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. They come in three forms, triglycerides, phospholipids, and steroids. Let's take a look at each one now. Triglycerides are the main energy store in adipose tissue, or seeds. They are comprised of a single glycerol molecule joined to three fatty acids via ester bonds. Glycerol is a three-carbon chain with a hydroxyl group on the right of each carbon, with hydrogens occupying the remaining bonds. A fatty acid is a straight chain of carbons with a methyl group on one end and a carboxyl group on the other end. Whilst you must be able to draw the full structure of a triglyceride, they can also be represented using a simplified diagram like this. Like with polysaccharides, they are formed via a condensation reaction, which produces water, another anabolic reaction. You are expected to be able to draw this and identify the ester bonds present. Draw a glycerol molecule with three fatty acids to its right. Ensure the carboxyl group of each fatty acid is adjacent to a hydroxyl group on the glycerol. These two groups then combine to form an ester bond. Therefore, a total of three bonds are formed, also producing three molecules of water. It is worth noting that fatty acids can come in two forms, saturated and unsaturated. Saturated fats only contain single bonds. Unsaturated fats contain one or more carbon-carbon double bonds. If only one double bond is present, it is named monounsaturated. But if there are multiple, it is named polyunsaturated. Unsaturated fats come in two isomers, cis and trans. Cis isomers have hydrogens on the same side of the double bond. As a result, they are bent, so less dense and thus found in liquid form. Trans isomers have hydrogens on opposite sides of the double bond. As a result, they are straight, so more dense and thus found in solid form. These isomers are often discussed in the context of human health. Saturated fats, and by extension trans fats, increase cholesterol and so increase the risk of coronary heart disease. Therefore, unsaturated fats are considered to be healthier. However, the evidence supporting this guidance is debatable. Phospholipids are created when a glycerol molecule binds to two fatty acids and a phosphate group. They are found in the membrane and are represented using this simplified diagram. Phospholipids are discussed in detail in our IB Biology Topic 1 video series, so for more information, go and watch that now. Steroids are lipids containing four ring structures. They are mostly found in the form of cholesterol and other hormones such as testosterone, estrogen and progesterone. Whilst you do not need to know how to draw the structure of a steroid, you could be asked to recognise them in a multiple choice question. Lipids and cholesterol are often discussed in relation to human health, with regards to the concept of body mass index. This measure is a brief indicator on the general health of an individual. It can be calculated using the formula BMI equals M divided by H squared, where M equals mass in kilograms and H equals height in metres. The calculated value for BMI is then compared to the following reference ranges. BMI is not the best indicator of an individual's health. 
but it is a good general screen. That's it. You now understand the types, structures and implications of lipids on health. We hope you've enjoyed the second video in our IB Biology Topic 2 video series. Check out our notes, flashcards and questions on our website to reinforce your understanding from this video.